Hey there, I am Mucia. About a week ago, I received a new machine to make electronic music. This is the Dutouch S, a smaller version of the Dutouch L. It combines a loop sequencer with some instruments and effects, and I wanted to share my impressions with you and make a little review of it. It's made by Duello, a French independent startup that is based in Paris. By the way, this is not a sponsored review, nobody asked me to do this. I'm doing this because I want to like this instrument, as I supported the project on Kickstarter a while ago, and I also think that it has a lot of potential. I wanted to share a bit what I tried to see the limits of it. This video may be a little bit longer than usual, so I'll put the different part of the review in the description so you can jump to the part you're interested in if you want. So here we go! First, it is an instrument that you can play. It is held like this, a bit like an accordion. And you also have a belt on which you can attach the do touch, which is quite handy and hold it in a code position. On the bottom, you have a button to turn it on, a hole for the charger to recharge the batteries, which is a USB charger, the same that is used by many phones. And you have a hole in which you can insert a pin to reset it if it bugs and gets stuck. I tried it once and you seem to keep the loops that you recorded before, which is nice. And you have a mini jack plug to plug headphones or speakers. It doesn't have any built-in speaker, which can be a bit sad. I mean, it has a really good size, it's really tiny and transportable, so it can fit in any bag. But when you arrive in somewhere and want to quickly hear what you've done or you want to show to a friend how it works, it sometimes can be a bit annoying having to look for a speaker that is not always in easy reach. So it's easier to carry it around with some audio splitter in case you want to plug several headphones in it. On the front, you have velocity sensitive pads on which you can play notes. The feeling of the pad is surprisingly pleasant. It doesn't really push us down and it is really soft. By default, the notes are displayed like this, where the notes of the scale are the notes that are lit here, and you can play the notes that are out of the scale with the pads that are not lit. The notes are put in this way. Which means that if you press three notes on the same side like this, it plays a chord, which is great and easy to use. You have a tactile strip to control the volume or the value of different settings. In the middle, you have the music buttons. When you press it once, you can record a loop. The recording starts at the first note played. Then you press again to stop the recording. When you keep it pressed, you can access all the loop you recorded on the right, play or stop them to create your song, and on the left you can access the different songs you created. So you can store up to 24 songs, I think, made of 7 instruments each. Each instrument has 2 or 3 different loops recorded, and drums can play several loops simultaneously. And on the top you have the instrument button. When you keep it pressed, every pad is a different instrument that you can play, and you have the setting button to access the different kind of settings. Press the setting buttons alone to access the do-touch settings. Press the set Setting buttons with the instrument button to access the instrument settings and press the setting buttons with the music button to access the song's settings. Okay, let's make a song to see how it works in practice. Just before we start, I would like to add that apparently Duolo plans to add features and bug fixes as the software gets updated. So if you're watching this in the future, it might be a bit out of date. To begin the song, I first need to set the tempo and the track settings, so music plus setting, and I need to find the pad that corresponds to the tempo and set it with a tactile strip. Then I need to hear the click, so I find the pad that corresponds to the click and turn the volume up with a tactile strip. And lastly, I need to set the quantize value because it is really hard to be perfectly on time and I want all my kick drum to be right on the beat and I also want my loop to loop perfectly with the tempo. So I need to find the path for the quantization and set the value on, let's say, one beat, as I will only put a kick drum on every beat for now. It's a lot of back and forth between playing and setting things up, but if it feels a bit fiddly at the beginning and you spend some time tapping all the paths to find the settings you're looking for, I honestly think that you get the hang of it fairly quickly, as everything seems to be very well organized in a sensible way. For instance, when you're choosing an instrument, at the top are the drums, in the middle are the melodic instruments, and at the bottom are the effect sounds. On the left you have the more electronic instruments, and on the right you have the more acoustic tones. And the last selected setting stays selected when you go back to the option menu. Which means if I want to change the quantization to put hi-hats on the half beats, I can find the quantization right away by entering the song settings, as it's the last setting I changed. It makes things quicker to play and to learn. Okay, so now that we have drums, let's add other instruments. I'm gonna use this clean guitar, but I would like to add some more reverb on it. So I need to go in the instrument setting, where you can add some reverb, chorus, delay, distortion, filter, different EQs, or even an arpeggiator. For most of those effects, you have access to different settings with the last pads on the right-hand side. For instance, if you select the delay, you can set the speed of the delay, as well as the feedback, or if it's a mono or stereo delay. 
only wish that there were a bit more options for some of them, like the distortion that has only one type of distortion, and the filter that is only low pass or bend pass and no high pass, and we don't have access to the ADSR of the sounds, which would have been great. Okay, let's try the arpeggiator then. I'll shoot the sine wave instrument. In its effect, I'll add some reverb and a filter that would cut the higher frequencies to have a smoother sound. And then I'll add an arpeggiator and I'll set it to half notes. This value is a bit odd as one refers to one beat and not one bar. So if you choose one fourth, it would be one fourth of a beat, which is a sixteenth note. And then I can choose the arpeggio mode and I'll set it to down so it plays like this. Let's play an arpeggio on three notes so it adds some motion on top of the 4 4 beat. Let's say I added another instrument, like this percussive organ, but I want to add a delay after I recorded it. So I can do that by accessing the loop setting. To access the loop setting, you press the music button and double tap the loop you want to modify. And here you have almost all the options that you have for the instrument settings, except that the arpeggiator is replaced by a beat repeat and you don't have the portamento options. But there you can add your delay and you can also adjust the volumes of the different instruments like this. I didn't notice this menu at first and it really was a game changer when I discovered it. Something you have to know though is for the drum instruments. The settings are for the whole instrument, which means you can set a different volume for your hi-hats and for your kick drums. And if you set a reverb on your snare for instance, it will also affect your kick drum and this can get a bit frustrating sometimes. Also I encountered a bug that will surely be corrected soon, but when I change an instrument while I'm playing a note, this note gets stuck and plays on and on and on, even if I change the music I'm recording. So it can be avoided easily by being careful, but uh, yeah. Yeah, sometime I had to restart the dotage because of it. Once the music is done, you can plug your dotage to your computer and sync it with the DoStation, the software that comes with it. The software acts like a hub that allows you to save the sounds you made. It allows you to update your dotage to update the sounds that are in it, and you can even create your own instruments using samples so you can use it with your own sounds, which is great. If you want to store your music in a custom folder in your hard drive, you can. You can export it to Do Musics and only do music files. What is do music files? It's like a MIDI file, but that can be read only by a do touch. So how do I export it if I want to listen to it on an MP3 player, or if I want to send it to a friend or share it on the internet? The best way would be to plug a cable from this mini jack, which is the only output of the do touch S, and plug it to a sound card, so you can record it with a door. Alternatively, if you don't have a door or a sound card, you can plug it directly into the microphone plug of your computer and record your live performance with Windows Default Recorder. That can work. It is very fiddly to export your do music into MP3s at the moment, but it's kind of understandable. I mean, with the do touch, you create loops that you layer on top of each other, and the structure of the song is not written, you play it. So it's kind of understandable that you have to play it to record the song. The problem is that you can't do that with the software that is provided with it. I hope that in the future we could have a recorder directly in the do station, and that we could export our loops into WAV files or MIDI files so it could be imported in another software. Even though this version of the do touch is presented as an instrument just to have fun, it would be nice to have a simpler way to share the music we make with it. Just before we jump to the conclusion, I'd like to talk about a few features that I haven't tried yet, but that can be fun to use. You can actually assign several parameters to the slides there. Apparently, you can use the tactile lines separately to control different settings, like the reverb or the cutoff or filter, for example. As the pad of velocity sensitive, you can also control the parameters with it as well. While you play a note, you can push more or less to control it, so it could be great to control a vibrato, for instance. And you can also control other parameters by tilting the do-touch back and forth or on the sides, which looks like a lot of fun to control the pitch, for example. As I said, we have to note that I am reviewing the version S of the do-touch here, which is sold as an instrument to have fun. Which still bugs me a little for a machine that is sold at 480 euros or 420 pounds. The L version of the do-touch is more oriented for live performance with a MIDI DIN output and a line output. So we can imagine that some of the hardware interface has been removed to cut the cost and present it at a lower price. But the software should be quite similar and can still be updated, as said on their website. So I think it still has a lot of potential and is very fun to play with and is still very intuitive. I like the fact that this version is easily transportable due to its small size 
precise and lightweight. I think I'll use it more to find ideas and loops while I'm traveling or in the transport to go to work. And then I would record the loops one by one to finish the song on Ableton like I'm used to do. I think that's a fun and cool way to gather a lot of ideas quickly and anywhere away from the computer. And I'm looking forward to see some updates on the firmware and the do station, keeping in mind that this instrument is still young. If you want to learn more about the do touch or duello, I'll leave their website in the description of the video. So these are my first impressions after using it for a few days. Let me know in the comments if you knew about the do touch or if you want to see more review like this on the channel. If you like this video, leave a thumb up so other people can find it. And if you didn't like it, leave a thumb down or not. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.